Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week I'm going to do a screencast on a requested feature. Uh, I had a number of you request that I do a screencast on mail server, which is something I wasn't intending to do because we've been talking about a home server, but uh, because you guys requested it, I'm going to give it my best shot to kind of walk you through this. Now, a couple of cautions as I do as I do this. Mail server really isn't necessarily meant for a home user. It's meant for uh, a small business. There's a lot of complexities in running a mail server that uh, if you're just sort of dabbling in this and checking it out, uh, I wouldn't trust your primary mail to it while you do that. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's probably better for you to have your mail hosted somewhere else so you don't have to worry about the headache. Uh, but for those of you that want to kind of experiment with it and see how it works, uh, I'll do a little bit of a walkthrough for you. Now, as we get started, there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. Uh, the first thing uh, that we, you, you need to keep in mind is that a lot of ISPs will block port 25, which is needed uh, for you to relay mail. And so if they've blocked that port, you won't be able to, uh, to have a mail server running, and so that's not going to work for you. Uh, the other thing is, is you'll need a static IP address because you don't want to have an IP address that changes all of the time or otherwise when it changes you don't get your mail and so now you got a problem with that. Uh, a lot of times you'll have to pay for that static IP address through your uh, ISP service because they'll make you go to a business account so you'll want to check that out as well. The other question that you've got to answer that we that you need to understand is who handles your DNS. If you remember our uh, we talked about DNS in one of the first uh, things I did in this series and uh, the DNS just says where where certain services go to certain IP addresses and so you need to know does your ISP handle your DNS in which case you would need to contact your ISP to have them change the records that are called MX records uh, to allow your mail server to work and MX records are basically just mail records that tell you how to route mail back to your server and so you might need those changed uh, you might have a situation where you have what's called a split DNS and that's usually what many home users have and if you followed my tutorials that's what I've got and so that's that's where you have DNS inside your home server working from your server, so your server is handling the DNS in your local network, and then you have a host provider on the outside that's handling your external DNS, with your router kind of being the uh, gateway in between. And so with that, there's a certain way you need to set up mail server for that. And then you also have it in a lot of cases where your server itself is handling the DNS for both internal and external, and then there's a different way to set up records for that. So you'll need to know which type of server you've got. Now, before I go in and configure mail server, there's a couple of things I want you to do. Uh, the first thing that uh, you'll, I want you to do is to go to Apple site and download your server admin tools. Now, we haven't covered these yet, uh, but these are extra tools that allow you to do some more detailed settings with your server. So you want to click the download button, download these, and install them. And uh, once you have those ready to go, then uh, you'll want to pull up uh, the server admin uh, application, which kind of looks like this with the globe and the little dish sitting on the dish. So you want to pull that up. So first what I'm going to show you how to do is setting up your external DNS because I'm going to assume that you're doing a split DNS for this particular uh, segment. So what you'll want to do is go to your, um, go to your ISP and go to your uh, cPanel or wherever your domain, not your ISP, but wherever your domain name is hosted. You'll want to go to your cPanel. Let me just pull out of this for a second and go back home. You want to go to where you edit your DNS zone. And so in my case, it's this DNS zone editor. For some of you, it may be something else. So you click that. And then what you're going to do is, uh, there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, you can kind of leave this alone and, and hope that it works out and try to run the server without it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But the best way to do it on the internet is to have uh, a mail server and have MX records to make everything clean. So what you'll, what you'll want to do is come in here and you'll want to type in uh, an A record for mail. Or you can just put the whole thing, mail.example.com, uh, whatever your server is. And then you want to put the IP address of your uh, router, right? Your external IP address, you want to put that here. So it should match whatever you put in before for your server. And you add an A record right here. Then you're going to come back out uh, to your home area here, and then you're going to want to go set an MX record. Now for me, because of the service I bought, I don't have uh, an extra little thing to set an MX record, so I'm going to have to show you how that works on uh, this website here. So what you'll do is go, go where it says MX Entry. You're going to click that under your mail. Then you're going to select the domain that you just created. And you can see you could use another domain or something like that. But select the domain you just created, mail.example.com, for instance. And then what you're going to do is clear out your existing MX records that were set up. 
and add a new one. And your new MX record will be your mail.example.com, which will show up here. And then you can set the priority for your email. Uh, it goes 0 to 10. And you can just go ahead and set that up and put that together. That way your external DNS then is already set up and you're ready to go uh, in configuring your mail server. Everything's set and ready to go. And for you, you'll do it for whatever your ISP is. So let me just pop this down here. And I'm going to show you how to set up your mail server with uh, the server app. And then I'll show you how to do it with the server admin that I just had you download, which gives you kind of a nice middle in between. Because there's really three ways you can do it. You can do it the simplified way with server. You can do it through a configuration utility I'm going to show you. And then you can also do it manually. And so I'll show you the differences between those. So when you come in here to mail uh, server app, you have mail over here. You can see it's not running for me. Uh, basic settings here. You do provide email for it and you put in your domain here. So if you were to click edit, it just brings a drop down. You put in your domain. Whatever comes after the www, you put that in there and it shows your domain. So it would instead of www.example.com, it would be example.com. Then you have relay outgoing mail through your ISP. Certain ISPs require you to relay your email through them. That helps them determine whether you're a, spam, a spammer or not. And so if you need to do that, you would click that here. You'd put in there address, you know, the SMTP address, whatever that is. And then if they want authentication, you would enable that and put in your username and password that your ISP has given you. And that would allow you to relay your email. Uh, you can also limit your email to a certain size. So if, if you don't want you all, all of your hard drive space to be messed up, you can say, hey, you know what? You can only have 500 megabytes of storage. And so for each user, and when a user hits that limit, it says, hey, your mailbox is full. Empty some stuff out before I'm going to let new email come in. And then you can enable webmail, which allows you to use the uh, web services that we'll talk about later to access your email over the internet. And then finally, you've got edit filtering settings right here, where you can you can enable virus filtering, uh, you can enable blacklist server filtering, where an outside website knows all of these different known spam domains, and it will automatically filter those out for you, like spam hosts and stuff like that. You can put their uh, IP, uh, their domain in here, and it will then filter your mail through that. Uh, you can also enable junk, junk mail filtering and say how aggressive to cautious you want to be. So as you can see, pretty simple settings, pretty basic. And then when you're done, you throw the switch and uh, everything starts up. And as we'll talk about here uh, in a minute, when you start that service up, you want to make sure that your ports are opened on your router. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute to show you how to do that. But that's that's a basic setup, okay? And you would throw that and everything would be good. What I want to show you is how server admin helps you set it up. And so uh, if you pull up server admin, you get this kind of screen. Let me just show you what it looks like. Uh, you'll get this uh, first screen with your server. When it logs in, it'll show all the different services that are active. Uh, green means that uh, it's running. No, green means that it's not. And you can see my mail isn't running here. Uh, but you may not show mail on the side there. You might wonder where that is. So go into settings over here and then go to services and then just check mail and it will show up in the sidebar over here so that you have it available. So let's just go into mail for a second and I'm going to go to the overview. Now, you'll notice all the services are stopped because they're not running. But you'll notice this little configure mail service down here. And this is kind of a nice balance between the ones that I told you about. This is the middle one that you might want to use. Gives you a little bit more control. So you just click this configure mail service. And what it does is it pulls up the ser uh, service configuration assistant, which will uh, walk us through how to set up email. And it, it kind of has a little bit of a wizard that walks us through. So let's wait till that gets started, and then we will walk through the service. OK, now that the uh, wizard is back up, we can walk through the process of setting up uh, mail uh, using the configuration utility. So let's just click Continue. On this page, it allows us to enable POP, IMAP, SMTP uh, on your incoming server. You put your domain name. Again, that's what's after the www. That's the example.com. And then your host name, which would usually be your server.example.com. You want to put that in there. You have the option to hold outgoing mail. You can also relay your mail through the host, just like we talked about before, where you'd put in that SMTP address right there. Let's click Continue. Again, you can filter for junk mail, uh, how high you want to filter it or how low. You can scan for email viruses, uh, and you can tell whether the, whether the infected file should be deleted, bounced, or redirected. Gives you a little bit more you can do there. And then you can update your virus databases, and you can say if you want it you know, different than 12 times a day, maybe you want it 24, maybe you want it 1, whatever you want to put there, you can update that just by checking that box. Hit Continue. And then this is your secure authentication. 
And now what it says right now is just going to do this regular uh, security stuff with the login. What I would do is check uh, the Kerberos as well uh, because if you don't have something checked you can't use that method of logging in. And the Kerberos gives you kind of the single sign-in uh, ability so that when people sign into their accounts they can also have be signed into their email. So uh, I would check those uh, three as well. Leave the non-secure authentication alone because you don't want that to happen. You want it to be secure. Next you can have the default mail store location and this is where your mail files are stored when they're downloaded from the server. Uh, I might move this one. You can uncheck this and you can move it wherever you want. You might want to move it to a uh, external drive or a bigger drive so that you don't have to worry about um, you know, running out of space and things like that for your mail store. I'm going to leave that alone for now. Then down here you put your uh, the alias names for the server, your local host, your domain is here. You would also add in maybe mail.example.com you know, in here if you've got that set up as well. So you put that in there. So when we click continue, now it shows us all of the things that it's going to put into place and uh, all the settings that we just made and when you click continue what will happen is it will set up the mail service. I'm going to leave that alone since I'm not setting it up. But what will happen is it will actually configure all those things, turn on the mail service and show that everything is functional. This will turn to green and you'll be ready to go. So that kind of shows you the uh, the configuration utility for mail service. Uh, you can also do some settings uh, manually just by clicking the settings button here. I won't go into all those details but that gives you an even deeper layer of uh, you know configuration. Alright so that sets that up. Now one thing I want to show you real quick for those of you that may be on uh, a DNS setup where you are the only uh, DNS server out there you know that you're the primary DNS for everything you don't have your ISP or an outside host working for you here's where you can set up your MX records on your server. You just click on your particular server area there and down below here uh, you can see where you can put in mail exchange servers. What you would do is if you drop this down, you have machine records. You would want to add a, hold on, you want to add an A record uh, right here, which would fall under here. Uh, you could do a C name too, but an A record, you know, either one you want to do. A record is probably the better one to do. And then put mail.example.com, for instance. And then you would add that down here and put your priority. And that would set up your mail exchange record uh, on your server so that your server can be the primary DNS for the internet and for inside your network, as far as I understand how that works. So, anyways, that shows you all the different places within server admin where you can set that up. One more thing that I want to show you is uh, none, none of this is going to happen unless the ports are open uh, on your uh, server. And so if you remember, if you've got an Airport Extreme, you can come down here, find it, uh, add the mail service, right, by clicking this in the drop down and finding mail. Click Add. It'll add it in here just like this. Reboot your router and uh, all your ports will be open that you need to have to make the service work. For those of you not on uh, an airport uh, extreme, what you want to do is go in and open the ports yourself within whatever utility you use. Let me just click the edit here so you can see the ports that need to be opened. All of these ports here are the ones that you'll want to open uh, with whatever your private uh, IP address is. And uh, there's the TCP uh, ports there. Open those up and you should be ready to go. Your server will be uh, open and your email should work. Now again, just uh, I just want to reiterate the fact that this is not a simple setup. Things can happen and go wrong all the time. You may have to take a look at all these different settings and tweak them a little bit depending on your individual situation. But at least now you've got a feel for all of the different areas and, and things that need to be set up and can be set up. Sometimes your host will want you to set it up a little differently as well so you may have to work with them. All right, well, that's all I have for this week. Hopefully that uh, helps you get set up uh, with a mail server if you want to do that. Like I said, I like using an outside host because then they have to worry about all this stuff. But uh, I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.